zero property is this. If a times b equals zero, then either a is equal to zero or b is equal to zero. One of them, or it could be both. Okay? Either one zero, the other zero, or they're both zero. So what we want to do is figure out, okay, the value of x that would make our equation equal to zero. So if we have a product, we have to look at each factor individually. So I'm going to look at the factor, this factor of x, and then the other factor of x plus 7 individually. What value for the first factor would make our equation 0? If x was 0. Basically what would make it 0 is, in this case, there's no plus 1 or minus 2, it's just x. So if x is 0, so that one would be x equal to 0. Then the other factor we want to ask ourselves, what would make x minus 7 equal to 0? If x is what? Positive 7. Add 7 to the other side. Or you could just look at it and see. Well, what minus 7 equals 0? 7 minus 7 equals 0. So it's our solution then would be 0 and 7. Are the two values of x that would make our equation equal to 0. Make sense? Ish. Okay, let's keep going. When we solve, if I want to solve an equation and it's a quadratic, whenever we solve quadratics, it's very important to remember, like with linear equations, remember what you did with linear? Okay, with linear, uh, let's put it over here. Okay, if I had a linear equation, I had 2x plus 3 equals 4x minus 9. How did you solve a linear equation? So you want all x's on one side, and then, and all the constants on the other side. Agreed? So it's so ingrained into you. And so the problem is, is students are so used to linear equations, they want to get all the x's on one side, all the bit constants on the other. But now we're dealing with quadratics. So in quadratics, to solve a quadratic, we actually need to get everything onto one side and the other side is equal to zero. So that we can factor. So with a quadratic, we need one side of the equation to equal to zero. Okay, one side of the equation has to equal to zero. Usually, we try to make x squared to be a positive x squared. So in this case, who should we move? The 3x, we're going to subtract it to the other side. And we're left with x squared minus 3x equals 0. Now that we have one side of the equation equal to 0, then the next step is to factor. So what can we factor out of that? X. And we're left with X minus 3 equals 0. So what are the values of X that would make this equal to 0? Start with each factor. So starting at the factor of just X, what value of X would make that 0? 0. And then the second factor, X minus 3, what value of X would make that factor 0? 3. 3 minus 3 would give you 0. And there's your solution. Okay. So quadratics, we have to get one side equal to 0. Number 5, is it factored for you already? Yes, be very careful that that equals 0. Sometimes they like to give you a question, maybe it looks like this. X minus 1 times X plus 2 equals 5. That's so mean, because that means you have to expand and use FOIL. Make one side equal to zero, and then refactor. So be careful of these cases. Okay, that means you'd have to actually foil it out, and then bring the five over and make one side to zero, and then refactor. 
but we're equal to zero, so this should be easy. What values of x? So the first factor, what value of x would make that zero? One, so it's always the opposite sign. What about, and you could even, if you want, you could set it up as x minus one equals zero, add one. So add zero is x equal to one. The other factor, x minus six, what would make it zero? At six, it would be six. I would hope that, especially as an AP class, you can just look at that and say, oh, it's one and six. Can you do that? Or at least get to that point by like tomorrow or the next day. Okay? What would value of x would make that zero? Okay, so what do we have to do with six? Before we can factor, bring everything to one side, so we're going to move, in this case, let's keep our x squared positive, so I'm going to move the 5x to the other side by subtracting it. Okay, so now that one side's equal to zero, we factor. One and one, what two numbers would you use? 3, 2, and what would their signs be? So this multiplies 2, 3, we want it to be both negative, make negative 5. Our factors are x minus 3 and x minus 2. What's the solution then? 3 and 2, or 2 and 3, same thing. Okay, you try seven. You try seven, we'll skip eight. I think you'll get this. Just give seven a try. Okay, you know what to do in this case. All the other ones we looked at were nice, simple trinomials, x minus 1, x plus 2. How would you solve for the value of x of 2x plus 3 that would make x equal to 0? I'll show you the shortcut in a second. We're basically solving, could you solve that linear equation? When is 2x plus 3 equal to 0? Sure. First step. Minus 3. So you have 2x equals negative 3, and then divide by 2. x equals negative 3 over 2. Double check that. 2 times negative 3 over 2, what does that equal? What's 2 times negative 3 over 2? Negative 6 over 2, which is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 3 gives you 0. So a shortcut is if this was ax plus b, it's going to be negative b over a. Opposite sign, and then second over first, b over a. So in this case, negative 3 over 2. 3 over 2, just by looking at it. 
So the last one, I'm just going to tell you what it factors to, and you tell me what the solutions are. Oh, with the other one. Sorry. Forgot the other guy. One. That one's easy. And one. Okay. So the factors of this factors to x plus 1 times 6x minus 5. Okay. What are the solutions for x? So the first factor is... What value of x equals, make that negative 1, or sorry, so make that 0. I said it, negative 1. Okay, what would be the solution for, what value of x would make the second factor equal to 0? Okay, so if it's a minus sign, it's always opposite sign, just like here, x plus 1, our solution is negative 1. So always the opposite sign, so in this case it'll be positive second over first. 5 over 6, okay? And the reason why is we're solving when is 6x minus 5 equal to 0. If you want, just write that out and solve it. Add 5, 6x equals 5, divide by 6. There it is, 5 over 6. Okay? The length of an outdoor lacrosse field is 10 meters less than twice the width. The area of the field is 6,600 meters squared. Determine the dimensions of the field. Very similar to our maximum problem. Okay, where do you want to start? <laughs> area equals what? Of a rectangle. Let's start basic. We know area equals length times width. Do we know the area in this case? Yes, we know the area this time. Okay. We have a problem. We have two variables. We want just one variable. Is there a relationship between length and width? The length is... 10 meters less than twice the width. So is means equal. So length is 10 meters less than twice the width. How would you write that? 2w minus 10. So when you do 10 less than, you have to, it goes in the back. So it's less, 10 meters less than 2 times the width. Okay, where do you go from here? Substitution. So let's sub that in. 6,600 equals, our length is actually 2w minus 10 times the width. Length times width. All right, what do you do from here? Could you just list that's what the answers are now? No, because it's not equal to zero. So we have to expand, bringing the W inside the equation. 2W squared minus 10W. What do you do from here if you're solving a quadratic? Minus 6,600. One side has to equal to zero. So let's bring that over. Next step. Okay, we want to factor. Let's see. It, now be careful of these two. When you're factoring, always check for what first. GCF, which in this case is 2. So we can divide each term by 2. This is a fun one. <laughs> 3,300 
is 100 times 33, 50 times 66. What else? Did you get it? Because 100 times 33 and 50 times 66, that doesn't have a difference of 5. Um, we could do 25 and, no, yeah, but that's still too big. We could go better. There's better. What else is there? 110 times 30? That's still not good. Got to be closer to 50 and 55 and 60? That would do it. Okay. So it's a simple trinomial, right? Uh, which one is positive? The 55 is positive because we want to add to negative 5. Right? So if you were factoring this decomp method, you would still use 55 and 60. Minus and a 3. If you're doing this method, 1 and 1, you would do like 55, 60, right? So 60 and 55, you want this one to be negative. W, W, what? Okay. All right, do we know our solutions then? The width is either, what would make W plus negative 55 or 60? Did any of these not work? Right, we cannot have a negative width. So there's, therefore, our solution is 60 for width. How do I get the length then? 2w minus 10. 2 times 60 minus 10 is 110. So our dimensions are 60, what's the unit? meters by 110 meters. That page took longer than expected. Okay, okay so do you get the general idea? So we equate one side equal to zero, we factor, determine which, uh, when each factor equals zero, and then double check in an application, check to make sure the solution is not a restricted value. I don't know if yours does this. Does it say that? Or that part? Just in, a, in an application question, make sure that you know, if it's, uh, it's like width, like we just covered, always double check that. Uh, let's try, can you try two? can't use substitution in this one because the in, the binomials aren't the same. So you just have to expand.
x plus 2 times x plus 2 and FOIL that out. So x squared, and then the outside and the inside is your middle term. So we have x times 2 and 2 times x. So that's how I get 4x's, 2x plus 2x. And then the last, the last term, 2 times 2 is 4. I'm bringing in the 2 here, 6x minus 10. Collecting like terms. Still, when you do that, you don't have one side equal to 0. So I've read it, you have to bring the 18 to the left side of the equation so that one side equals 0. Then you can factor. Okay, so I don't know if you were trying to factor x squared plus 10x minus 6. You weren't ready to factor. You need when one side equals 0. Okay. One thing I wanted to mention about number 1 is if you have a negative x squared, instead of bringing the positive 10 to the left side, why not bring negative x squared and positive 3x to the right side of the equation? So that your x squared is positive. This factors so much easier. Okay. So, I highly recommend that you keep your x squared positive. Do you feel like we should do another example? Yes? Sure? Let's do five then. It's pretty easy to find. Okay. Uh, what I'd like to mention is that we can check our work graphically. So on your graphing calculator, if you wanted to check your work, you would type in the original equation, 10x squared minus 20x minus 350. What's, what's all this? 30. I'll do it again. Uh, 10x squared minus 20x minus 350. Okay, what are we looking for on the graph? The x-intercepts. The zeros and x-intercepts are the same thing. So calculate the zero, number two. Second, trace two. Um, you might want to zoom out. I'm going to zoom out, actually. It's not the greatest view. Oh, my. It is, okay, so windows, my x's were fine, negative 10 to 10. My y just needed to be enlarged. Let's try negative 100. 100, scale of 10. A little better. I mean, that's all we really need. We're just trying to find the zeros. You could have solved it just the way it was before. It doesn't have to be perfect. All we're looking for is those x-intercepts. So second trace two. And where am I? There I am. So left side of the zero, right side of the zero, and then a guess. And there it is. Or, you know what you could even do that's even easier if you're checking your work? Trace 
One of my solutions is negative 5. Enter. Does it give me 0? Yes. Trace. 7. Enter. Does it give me 0? Yes. That's even easier. We already have the answer. Let's just plug it in make sure it's the same thing. Instead of having to go left bound, right bound, yes. Left bound, right bound. Okay, you get the point. All right, so what is the assignment for this lesson? Let's leave it here. <laughs> you guys haven't had homework really that much homework for so long. Time. Okay, you're overdue for some homework. Okay, 229 to 233. 4 to 7 ACF. Okay, that means 4 ACF, 5 ACF, right? 8 to 11, and because you're special, number 13. Only because you're special. Okay, and you got time. Oh, it's totally the wrong one. Good news, it's less than that. I think it's the same page. The page is right, the questions are wrong. Let's try this again. Numbers 7 to 10. A, B, D, F, 11 to 14, and 17. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, that's, sorry, my mistake. 